uh, Kieran Maguire, fi- football finance expert, and of course, uh, co host of the Price of Football podcast, the excellent Price of Football podcast, joins us now. Good morning, Kieran. Morning, guys. How are we? Morning, oh, Kieran. I'm very good, thank you. I think I'm better than Everton fans. Uh, let me just read this uh, from Everton Football Club. The agreement between 777 Partners and Blue Heaven Holdings Limited for the sale and purchase of the majority shareholding in the club expired today. The club's board of directors recognises the considerable level of financial support 77 Partners have provided the club over recent months and would like to take this opportunity to thank them for this. But they are not buying the club, Kieran. How much trouble are Everton now in? I think this is actually good news rather than bad. 777 were never able to reveal where their money was coming from. Mm. The amount of money that Farhad Mashiri wanted in, in terms of buying the club, the, the Premier League been pressing on this, them on this for months and they've been very evasive. So whilst it's been beneficial in the sense that they've given around about £200 million to, to help build the stadium and to help pay the bills, um, they didn't have enough money to really complete the deal. And now Everton can go out and find uh, another partner, uh, another new owner. And, and there's an awful lot of people interested in the club who want what's best for the club. Anybody that's been connected with a 777 business wouldn't necessarily be able to say the same. Kieran, on the 777, obviously they, they're owed money as well by Everton. You said there, I think it was another 200 million quid. They've got their own financial problems, haven't they? 777, like, all over the world, they can't release their money. You know, some of the owners are being looked at. From Everton's point of view, is there any chance that 777 could go bust and then they don't owe them that money? Well, th- there is certainly a chance that 777 could go bust because there's an awful lot of people who are asking questions about them at present and they also owe a lot of money to, to their own creditors. But if they do go bust, what will happen will be it will be the equivalent of going into administration. And then it's the, the administrator's job to collect in all of the debts. Having said that, um, Everton owe money to MSP, to Andy Bell, who's a, who's a fan and, and other parties. And they've all got they've all got first dibs mm. on, on the money which Everton have. So 777 are very much at the back of the queue and, and they'd have to, therefore to wait their turn. But even then on, on the creditors, do they sometimes actually do a deal where if you you do 50p in the pound or 40p in the pound, you don't get all of your money? Yes, yes. I mean, uh, you, you, you've got to be practical. If, if, if Everton went bust today, then 777 wouldn't get a penny because yeah. the, the more senior creditors would, would pick up their money first. And it's the same if you, know, if, if, if you go bust as an individual, your mortgage company, because they got a, a mortgage over your house, they take the money first and so on. So, so there is a long line. There's no, there's no indication. Here. Everton are are okay at present, and there's an awful lot of people that that want the club to survive. But seven seven seven's position would not be enhanced if Everton went into administration or or similar. So, for clarity, Farhad Mashiri is still the owner of Everton. Um, he's got ninety four point one percent stake in Everton. Um, they still are building the the, the stadium. Um, Building the stadium has added 200 million to Everton's debt, which is that's still owed to 777. I'm assuming that's the clarity I suppose fans will want. That, that's right. Uh, I think there's uh, there's an organisation called MSP. I think they've they've lent about 180 million. Now that was due for repayment um, under one of the proposals of the the Premier League. That was due for payment yesterday. That's clearly not materialised. 777 haven't come up with the money to pay off MSP. What MSP choose to do with that money that's owed to them will, again, it's it's open discussion time. There has been talk about MSP potentially saying to Farhad Mashiri, tell you what, we'll write off the debt and we'll take your shares in return. And then we'll start, then we'll try to run the club and try to run the club on a on a more sensible basis than the Mashiri regime, with a view to finding new owners in due course. So there's there's lots of plates which are spinning at present. We're not getting a lot of news from Mashiri himself. He he has sort of gone underground. Um, he had very close connections to a guy called Alicia Usmanov, who was a was yeah. a close friend of Vladimir Putin. So he's been persona non grata. Um, it's 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 a it's a mystery as as to where some of the money has come from and and what the plans are for the future. And um, what about prospective new owners and buyers? You said there it's been reported that John Texter, who's 
a major shareholder at Crystal Palace. I think he owns 45% of Palace. He wanted to have the majority share. That don't know isn't going to happen. He might be interested in buying Everton, but he's got to sell his own shares in Palace mm. first. That, that's right. So John Texter, I think he's got fed up with things at Palace. It, it was an exciting project, but there wasn't wasn't his ability to to dictate terms. And, you know, Steve Parrish has been a, a, a Palace fan since a kid, and and he therefore wanted to have a greater say. I think uh, Texter certainly has the money. He would love to have a club with sort of the seniority of Everton, you know, in terms of its position in the history of of English football, and uh, he. He wants to get things moving quickly. So he's certainly an option. But mm. as you rightly said, under Premier League rules, you've got to sell before you can buy. But also as well, he's got interest in four other clubs. Um, uh, Olympic Lyon is, is one of them. And they've they've become quite stable, haven't they? They're doing okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, yeah, we, we've seen a few owners that come mm. in. And I think this, this criticism could be levelled at Mashiri that they, they splash the cash initially. It's a bit like having a lottery win, but but they don't spend it well. Um, and Hexter, I, I think he's slightly more cautious. He'll probably be looking at more of, a, of a, the long-term progress. You know, Everton in the city of Liverpool, which is you know, a preeminent city in the world of football, yeah. brand new stadium, awful lot to attract investors, but you've got to do the right things in the right order. Uh, Kieran, you look at these these situations all the time you look you looked at them very kindly this this year on your podcast um for uh, for my club Torquay United which you looked at and said this is a nightmare by some miracle we were taken over yesterday but I really thank you for shining a light on what was going on at the club we are safe now we have a uh, season ticket holder owners and some fan ownership so um we're absolutely delighted with that but uh, how do you see the Everton situation panning out how much trouble do you think they're in or not i i think they're actually in a better position today than they were yesterday in the sense that 777 would have been a disaster as far as ownership is yeah. concerned um we've only got to look at 777's other investments the airline that it owned that's gone into administration the troubles that have existed uh, at some of the clubs in continental europe where players haven't been paid uh, and so on you, you don't want that simply being transferred to evidence. So change isn't the same as an improvement. And uh, in the case of 777, it would have been frying pan, not just into fire, in, into the gates of hell. Appreciate you joining us from Gatwick Airport, I think you are, uh, Kieran. <laughs> That's people, right. People were yeah. hearing boarding gates and stuff in the background. Is it last call? Are you in Smith's? Are you in the bookshop? <laughs> what are you in? Duty free? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm, I, I've, I've just missed my shuffle. Oh, wow, we. Well, thank you for talking to us. Hope you still catch your flight. That is taking one Cheers, for mate. the team. Cheers, Cheers. Cheers, Cheers guys. Thanks for <laughs> right. Kieran Maguire missing, currently missing his flight. flight. Yeah, and booking. Talk sports to him, man. We'll be <laughs> Talk right. sports to him, man. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, well, well uh, look, uh, as a person who's been in a position where you worry about the future of your club, uh, I really hope it gets sorted out um, for Everton fans. And I really hope it gets sorted out soon for South End fans. Is that, that has dragged on a year now. But the South End United situation. But at least they have got light at the end of the tunnel. Well, but, they well, didn't no, have it's, any... it's, it, it, they, they, they did have, um, and the people who are trying to buy the club are still trying to buy South End United, but it's so held up with the council and a property deal and Ron Martin, the current owner, that it, it, it's, it's beginning to look like an absolute nightmare, you know, for them. So uh, fingers crossed for South End United fans as well. This is Charlie Baker and Perry Groves with you through till one. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.